Okay, coaches, uh, you're very, very, very welcome. And as Paul said, uh, this is our last uh, in the present series of our webinars. So uh, this is our fifth session, coaches. And um, now with everybody hopefully getting back out onto the field again, uh, might be in small groups, but um, a lot of teams are back out again. So as I say, this is our last session. And um, as Paul says, maybe before we start, if you have a notepad and pen, it might be useful to take some of the wee things down as I talk through it, even though, as Paul said, the presentation will be available afterwards. Um, there's been a number of questions, coaches, and um, I'm just going to refer to one before I start here this evening. Um, a number of you had asked for maybe activities or drills that uh, could be used at this, especially at this time here over the next week or two, whenever the social distancing is still in place. And if, I just want to refer back to the the first webinar that we done, and you'll find it if you go to YouTube and type in also GA in the top bar, uh, you'll you'll find all the five plus this one here. Hopefully in a couple of days' time, you'll find our webinars, and you'll get episode one which was called Fitness with the Ball Through Games and Game-Related Drills. On that presentation that night, coaches, I'm re going to refer here to five activities that was done on that first webinar that you could use over the next couple of weeks, as I say, whenever you're working in your small groups or whatever, till, till, till full contact. Uh, because as I said, a number of you had asked that question. So just take note of these here. As I say, of the first webinar that was delivered, fitness was the ball through games and game-related drills. You could do the one called hand fist pass give and go, very easily to to make it uh, uh, social distancing and that the end maybe the end groups and there might be two and a two at each end cone. Just uh, they can stand back, have another cone two meters back from that first person. That's, that's on the end cone to the next pair. So they'll know to go to that cone when they make the run down the line. So at least players will be um, two metres apart. So that hand fist pass give and go. You also have the fist hand pass, three player move it was called. There's also another one kick and follow. There was another one kick, follow, tick and give. And the last one was three player move and follow at speed. All those five coaches, if you refer back to those, and as I said to you, you'll get it on the YouTube also GA channel. If you go to, to refer back to those, those can be easily used for, uh, at this present minute. So uh, hopefully that is useful information for you. So um, as Paul said, distance game and activities to improve handling and decision making. So we'll just uh, move on here, coaches. So. I'm going to throw this one up at the start tonight. I've shown this maybe uh, once or twice in our webinars before, and it's it's so, so important. The old TV programme catchphrase, and you're looking at them, tell any of the new coaches that's on the night, you're looking at them, forget about the, the picture on your left, coaches. Just focus on them two pictures on the right-hand side and tell me, uh, say what you see there. It's a very popular phrase in modern-day coaching. Look at the wee doggy or puppy and the wee spot on it and look at the gentleman down below and what he's doing. He's fixing a television. So I'm referring to spot and fix. And that's so important in modern day uh, coaching uh, coaches because you can deliver sessions and sessions, absolutely. But there's times that you'll have to spot and fix the, the wee girl or the wee boy or the senior player, it could be. So what I'm saying is, always uh, spot the, the mistake or spot the, the wee thing that they're doing wrong. You know, if you have extra coaches, take, so, take that person out or take that player out, tell them how, how they can fix it and put them back into the game or activity again, or if you might have to spend a wee bit longer with them. But what I would, and I said this before, don't be continually taking out the same player because it's, it's unfair that just when you're doing any thing sort of, that nobody else even notices you doing it. So, as I say, it's very important to spot and fix. Yes, when it comes to a team situation, that's a different scenario. Absolutely, you'll stop it. Absolutely, you'll go through the whole team. If it's a team 
a problem that has to be fixed, then all the team, all the squad needs to know it and needs to know it very, very clearly. Okay, so we'll just move on, coaches. Right, the first wee one I'm going to throw up in eight here is three to three. I'm just going to play it here. This is one that can be used again in these present times, coaches. And I refer back to what I said to start, like one of the drills, seeing your pairs at the end there. Make sure uh, they step back. The, the pairs, the, these players come down the field now, that they come back and stand back two metres from the pair. The, the players are ready to go. Other than that, it's a continuous reel, coaches, this has been played on, so um, it's repeating itself. So do you, just watch it. I just want you, it's just a straight line, uh, straight line, hand pass the ball back and forward across the line to, uh, and going at speed. How far could you make that? You can make that 40 metres, you can make it 45 metres, you can make it 50 metres long uh, from one uh, set to the other set. Great for fitness, great for handling and everything you want on it. So uh, I just want to maybe point out one wee thing here, coaches. For ex example, have a wee cone sitting there. For example, I might try to put it up better for you here. Uh, we see now. Have a wee cone sitting there, and have a wee cone sitting there. And what I'm what, what why you have that wee cone sitting there for is they have to the ball passed off to some of the next three before they get by that cone. So that just as simple as that, the ball has somebody has to make that decision. Someone of the three coming up the field at speed with the ball has to make that decision before they get by that cone. As you see in that um, that animated one. They're running to very close to the players before they pass it. But you want to, so that cone could be 10 metres from there to there. And see from there to there, coaches, from across five metres, five steps I'm talking about. Five steps from there to there, and another five steps from there to, to there. So the players running are starting off five metres apart, but this cone here, out here, is 10 metres from the end. So the ball has to be passed to either the next three before they could buy them cones. Hopefully you understand that. Hopefully that's clear. And remember, the players then are five steps apart and ten steps out, ten, ten, ten steps again. I'll say it again from there to there to there roughly. And they after the ball passed before they could buy get by that cone. And one last thing, after every run you change a player in the middle. A new player in the middle for the next run. So this these players change this boy fella coming up here or gear Whenever they're finished, they're going to move out to that side and that player goes up the middle. So it's a new player in the middle. Also, coaches, I'm sure you're very aware of the three-player weave too. You could make that a three-player weave. Uh, very simply, the, the person we see that's given the ball slips in behind the person who they give the ball to. So make it a sort of a weave more so than just a straight line up and down the field. But it's great for handling there, great for fitness. And you get everything in that week uh, activity. So um, just hold on, coaches, till I. Just clear that. Okay, everybody happy with that? Three to three, I call that. Moving on to the next one, four station hand pass. This is a very good one. Uh, before we start again, I'm just going to sort of explain it, coaches. Five steps to that cone and that cone. And likewise, over this end, five steps from that cone and five, this cone. And now, in the in the in the middle here, um, from here to here, it's twelve steps. Roughly, if you're doing this with minors or seniors, it's twelve steps from here to here. Likewise, again, twelve steps, twelve steps, twelve steps, and right through to twelve steps. Then, so if you want to count that, that's about sixty meters they're going or sixty yards, whatever. A pace, everything at pace. You have a ball starting here, and you have a ball starting here. So there's two balls in the activity. So watch, watch your first two players. Now, if you're doing this with only 14s or girls, instead of having 12 steps, you might have nine or 10 steps here, or maybe eight steps. But definitely with minors and seniors, you can do that with 12 steps, no bother. So just watch it, the, the activity come out. One of them takes the ball, a pass, gives it on, forget about that ball. Whoever didn't take the first ball takes the next ball, slips it to his partner, and then move on, join the back of the line, and likewise going down again. Brilliant, brilliant activity. Brilliant for handling, brilliant for fitness. Everything you want in that game there. Absolutely brilliant. 
I call it the four station hand pass. Hopefully, you have got it there. I'll just let it play a wee second. It's continuous, it's in continuous play, coaches. So, hopefully, you've picked it up. Do you see the two balls we'll start off at? Two players come out, one ticket, give it. Then, whoever doesn't take the first ball has to take the next one. Slips it to his partner, who gives to the next one and join the back of the group. And the next two comes out and does likewise. Brilliant for fitness, as I say, brilliant for handling, running the ball through the hands of pace. Um, of course, after every whatever coaches you decide, after every couple of minutes or less, whatever, what do you do? You change of players in the middle. Yes, see if you have goalkeepers, use the goalkeepers in the middle. That's great hand for the goalkeepers there in the middle to be in the middle. They don't need to be doing all that running. You could use the goalkeepers or use injured players or use extra coaches in the middle. And if you don't have that, then use four players and change them every uh, couple of minutes, whatever the case would be. Uh, what do you start off with? What you could have two two pairs down here, two two groups of two, and one up, one just one player up here. Very very intense doing it like that. So what I'm, you could have two here, two here, and likewise up there, two and two. So they get a wee bit longer of a rest. But if you're going into championship and you want real sharpness and real intensity, you can have two twos here and just one and one up here. Excellent wee activity, coaches. Hopefully you're happy with that. And we'll just move on. Again, as I said to start, five, roughly about five steps here apart these cones down. Okay. Next one. This is called, I'm calling it the angle, the angled hand pass. This is taking the ball the shoulder at different angles. This is this is instead of taking the ball straight off a man's a player's shoulder, taking it at a 45 or less degree angle, whatever the case may be, it's harder to mark, coming at pace at the right time. So just watch this and play it here. I have only one ball in here to start. You could put on, you could put on a second ball, you could start a second ball here, but my advice is wait till the players get this one before you put on a second ball. Wait till they get a hang of the drill or the activity. Okay. Just watch it. Great for quick hands. Just don't pass any marks. The animated players are going a wee bit slower and it's a pause in a wee bit, but this is done at real, real pace. Now I'm going to stop it here a wee second, coaches, and explain a wee thing. See, when this, when this player gets the ball, this player should not be standing at this cone. How far is this cone from this cone? These two cones are about 10 steps apart. Remember that. Yes, you can make it a wee bit closer for on these, maybe eight steps. But don't have it only two or three steps off. That makes the drill uh, less useful. I'll put it like that. Ten steps, so he, the player back there has to time his run. And whenever the ball touches the skin of this man's hand, he's really at the shoulder. Right away, has timed the run. One second or two seconds ahead of the ball. He's there, takes it and gives it. And then this player has to be at the shoulder. These players on the outside has to time their run. Very important in the timing. So just watch it. See, when this ball, this player should be here. Whenever that ball touches the hands of this person, he should be here to receive the ball. So it's we flick off. So it's not shown maybe properly on an animated form here, but get the players to time their run. And one last thing before I move on. Remember, it's 10 steps. 10 steps everywhere. 10 steps between here and here. 10 steps between here and here. Likewise here, 10 steps everywhere, coaches. Try it with 10 steps. Maybe you'll make it a wee bit short, smaller for a younger group, but it's 10 steps everywhere. And uh, this run, this angle might be a wee bit too far out. What I'm saying to you is, and hold on, you can have your cone there. Just come on just slightly off an angle there. Maybe that is a wee bit too far, but again, it's 10 steps. Right there, and I say likewise here, but it's still 10 steps. Likewise here, that cone might be out a wee bit too much of an angle, and likewise here, and it's 10 steps. Great, great activity. And again, uh, that's not one part, that's not one that I'd be using for social distance at that minute. But then, first couple that I showed you absolutely can be used, plus the five that I told you at the start on webinar one. Okay, everybody happy with that, hopefully. And uh, we see now, 
and we'll move on. Right, this is called Quick Quick Hands. Uh, just going to play it. Again, it's sort of a wee bit slow motion, motion with the animated form, but this is done lightning speed in real life here, coaches. And what's happening here is one slips to two. Two should not be here. Again, likewise, after like the last activity, two should be coming here for the ball. Hold on, Ty, just highlight it a wee bit. Two should be coming here for the ball. You shouldn't be standing here when this player's the ball. Two should be coming into the middle for the pass. The ball's given to two. Whenever two receives the ball, three here should be coming off the cone to receive the ball. Takes the ball and then four should be timing the run and taking the three and giving it back to one again. And the activity continues. And one likewise again. And remember, these players are moving off the cone. They're not starting taking the ball at the cone. They're moving off the cone to take the ball, and then they're moving the ball quick, quick, quick hands. Uh, what can I say about this one? Uh, how would you measure it out for, 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 for seniors and minors, and even for any age level, this one can be used. And I would say to you, seven steps, a seven step square. So seven steps from here to here, seven steps, seven steps, and likewise. Seven steps would be would be perfect, I feel, and or roughly around that, you decide yourself. And um, how do you put on a wee bit of competition into that? Very simply, have two groups, have another group over to the side doing the same thing. If you have two coaches, which group gets 60 passes first? Which group gets 50 passes? Which group gets 70 passes? Whatever. All quick hands. And uh, uh, if you drop the ball, then tough luck. Uh, the coach doesn't count for the next successful pass that's made. So as I say, you could have a race between this group and a group likewise. And as I say, two coaches, one coach counting one and the other coach. And then when yet, whenever you're having the race coaches, make sure you do the counting. And then the players will really push. You want match pace here. You want quick, quick hands. You don't want no delay. You want everything done at match pace. Great, great wee uh, activity. Okay. Sure, to finish up, if there's any questions, you can put them to Paul. I can't see the questions, but Paul will put them through to me if you have any questions about these. But as Paul said, that these will be going back up. These will be going up on the YouTube. And if you register for the for the webinar tonight, it will be sent to you. A link will be sent to you. So, and as I say, you can get in touch with me if you have any queries. Okay, uh, we'll just move on. Okay, this one here is called two passes to kick now you might see four passes here but just focus on the two passes um we might have done nothing with four passes way back to start but i think it's best done with two passes this is a great one coaches for breaking ball one in the dirty ball you have four groups say for example you have 32 players if you're lucky enough to have 32 players or if you have 24 players you have six 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 and six, and then you bub them in two different colors. So we see now, coaches, Ty, you can have three V3, three reds against three, three yellows there. Likewise here, three reds against three yellows, likewise and likewise. If you have 32 players in, you have the luxury of having four V4 or whatever the case to be. I'll tell you another week, well, I'll explain it first, coaches, and then I'll give you another week tip that you could do um, if you have a, a number of players. Um, so there's that's the thing. You, the ball starts off. The coach kicks the ball up to one group to start. A high ball up in there, 50-50 ball. You're competing for the breaking ball. And remember, have the four groups well spread out over the field. For example, here there's one nearly now 21. There's one nearly now 21, and one to either side of the field. Not too close to the sideline, just out a bit. But there's plenty of distance between each group, so the ball could break anywhere. So let them compete. So the ball goes up. The 3v3 compete for the ball. Whichever team wins the ball, they have to put two hand passes together. Just two hand passes as a team, as a three or as a four. Two hand passes. And if they put two hand passes together, then the other team has to take the pressure off. Game is over. And then the team that's on the ball, nice and well, does it well, hangs the ball up nice and high for the next group. You can go around clockwise or anti-clockwise. And you hang it up for the next group, 
who fights for that ball again. Three, uh, three v three, four v four. Whoever wins a breaking ball has to get two passes together. For example, if the other team turns the ball over before the two passes are made, then they try to get two passes. And whenever whichever first team gets two passes together, the pressure comes off from the tackling team, and you put the ball up nice and high for the next group. And likewise again, and it goes round the semicircle, or um, you, or sorry, it goes round anti-clockwise or clockwise, whatever you say. And you just hang the ball up when the pressure goes off. Take your time and put the ball up nice and high for the next group. Great, great for breaking ball. One's anticipating the break, and then you have to get two passes, which is important. The players are moving for you, and you're tuned in to get the ball moving. Uh, what is they going to say at the start? Say if you have 32 or more players, you could have five groups. You could have it like a star. You know, five points to a star. And instead of having one ball in, you could have two balls in. So, for example, if I had another group over there, you could start with the ball there. And you can start the ball there, but evenly spread out the five groups. And that's very hectic. Very, very hectic. There might be an odd time you meet the person when a group's finished, they might have to hold on before they put the ball up to the next group because the ball still mightn't have moved on. But you could, which I've done it, and that has worked. So if you have five groups, uh, you could have two balls on. But one ball, uh, I think, coaches, is enough for four groups. It can be too much. A wee bit too much if you have two balls on. So just one ball, four groups. But if you have a fifth group, you will definitely could put on two balls and spread the two balls out to start. And one other thing, don't make it any less than three v three. I would say, or maybe four v four. So it's it's about numbers. It might be only one ball or two balls, whatever. Hopefully you're happy enough with that. Um, I don't think of anything else to say in that. Very good. Great for breaking balls. Say very intense. Good for fitness too. Uh, good for decision making too, making the right pass and all too when you won the breaking ball. So all that's coming into it. So uh, uh, we'll move on to the next one. Break ball and break out. Another breaking ball one coaches. You have a circle in the middle of the field. That's the You'll make the size of it compared to the numbers. Say for example, again, I'm just, just talking at the top of my head here. You have 24 players. You could have 6v6 in there it's, and six another 12 players resting at the side. And um, after, say, two or three moves, you can these players come out for rest and these other 12 players come in. So it's six v six, six reds, six maroons or whatever against each other. There's your coach. He throws the ball up high inside the circle. Whoever wins a breaking ball, then attacks to score. Uh, you can have a goalie in, can go for goals or points, whatever the case may be. So, for example, Ball's through in, here we go, attack, taking a point. This is a continuous really game, coaches, you, you'll see the same thing. But they can go on and take a goal if they want to. So it's, you just throw the ball up, you got a three or four, um, at them 6v6, got a three or four goals at this, then they'll be, they'll be rightly tired possibly, and then you could change them and put the other group in for three or four goals. Or you could go for six goals, or whatever the case would be. Or if you only have small numbers, and you only have 14 players that turn in, whatever, 15, and you have a goalkeeper and you have 7 v 7 in there, that's 100%. Take the, take the circle out towards the middle of the field or further out, and then they have a lot of work to do. As I say, that circle doesn't need to be uh, inside the 45. It could be out at the 60 and 65 yard line and make a nice big circle around, and they have to work hard to get the score. If the other team turns the ball over, then they still go for the score at this end. Which, uh, there still has to be a score or a wide ball or a save at this end before the move ends. So break ball and break out, I call that. Okay, hopefully you're happy enough with that one. And we'll move on to the next one, hopefully. And as I say, you can have goals for that one too. Have your goal in. Uh, next one, I call this, I'm calling this 20. 40 meters to score. Why I put on the 20 is with this with this new rule now, coaches. This new rule, um, if you're passing the ball, a kick pass from outside the 45 to inside the 45, and it goes 20 meters in distance, and the and your player catches it without the ball hitting the, the ground, then he's opportunity if he wants to take the mark or play on. So you can play a game just 20 meters or longer, or you can play a game 40 meters or longer. Now, before I show the clip here, coaches, um, 
I'm just going to put it on here. Before I start the clip, I just want to explain this. You might get a wee bit confused here with the goals here. There's no, there's no score. The only way you score here in this game is when you make a successful 20 meter kick pass uh, or a successful 40, 20 meter or longer kick pass or a successful 40 meter or longer kick pass. Now, that particular day, it was Roger who done this activity down in Abbottstown, and I think he was looking for uh, the players to, this, these were on the 16 lads, a 30 meter kick pass or better. Now, at the start, you might notice there was a 30 meter kick pass, and the player didn't leave the ball down to, to take the score or to accept the score. I, I, he just didn't get tuned into what Roger was telling him, but they soon caught on. So, whenever the pass was made, you set the ball down for the other team to take it. To, to get the ball, but that was one nil to your team. Every 30 meter kick pass, you can make as many hand passes as you want, or you can make many, but the ball either has to go over 20 meters or longer. Why I'm bringing in this, as I told you earlier, why I'm bringing in the 20 meters in ATF for is the 20 meter pass from outside the 45 to in can become a, a live pass now and may become a useful pass times. But in normal circumstances and years gone by, I've been saying, Passes should be no shorter than 40 meters or longer to get players to kick the ball longer because a 20 meter pass or 15 you can nearly hand pass the ball that length. But to, but this year it could be useful. So just watch them here, and well I'll I'll play it and hopefully you'll pick it up. The black shorts to the ball there, they're passing still no score, still too short. Now this was a long enough pass, but he didn't understand and he played on, so the score didn't happen. I think he set the ball down here. So this is one off the black team in the jerseys. Look, he let the ball down. The other team, you can't get a score from the kickoff from the start. So play continues. You, but you can score after the first kick, but you can't score from the from the very first kick from the restart. So just watch. I think there was a score here coming. And left the ball down. So that was one each. Now the, the team in the black jersey get the ball. Can't score. Can't get a score from the first kick. They work the ball, they work the ball. And this is a great score. And there's a score. Two, one, one for the team in the, uh, wearing the black jerseys. So hopefully you've picked up this. We'll play again, coaches. Hopefully you understand. What I, I'll just stop it here for a wee second. Now you can play it all over the field. That particular day it was played between the 65 and the end line. If you have more players, you can play it. Uh, to the other 65, if you have 30 players, you can play at the full length of the field, the whole field. And remember, the only way you can score is by getting the ball as long as you call it. It's up to you to make the call. Do you say 20 meters plus, 30 meters plus, 40 meters plus, or 50 meters plus? You decide how long you want the ball to be kicked, a successful kick before you offer a score. And remember, there's an old saying, hit the space, not the face. Yes, I was crediting that last score because it went straight to the chest. Uh, a lot of the time, unless the player's in open space, you should be hitting the space. It's easier for the forward or the player attacking the ball. If that ball bounces in front of them, one bounce is perfect. Two bounces and hard ground, no harm on it either. Instead of trying to hit the chest direct, because uh, if you have a tight marking team, it's very hard to hit the chest direct. And a ball coming at you at speed can bounce into your chest. So you're hitting the space not the face. Um, anything else can I say? Yes, that particular day the score was awarded whenever you made the pass and then the ball was left down. But another way you could play that game is, no, just play away. Whenever you get a score, you call it, 1-0 yellows, play continues, and they could get three or four scores in a row before the black jerseys get the handle on the ball. It's up to the black jerseys to turn the ball over. So you can play it continues through for five minutes or seven, eight minutes or whatever the case would be, or you can play it and as such as when you get a score, you place the ball onto the ground for the other team to take the ball. I like it the other way uh, as much as that way. I like it, uh, make the other team fight to get the ball, make them really fight. And remember, whenever the other team, when, if you're playing it like the way it was played on the, on the video there, if the, if the team, and I'll just show it one more time, sorry coaches, uh, with the, with, whenever they restart the ball, 
for we see a hold on. That should have been a score, but he didn't take the score. Now I think he took he left the ball down here. That was a score for the black team. Now uh, on the restart, you can't score in the first on the first whether it's a, a kick or a fist. So that fella kicked the ball, but it's not a score. Uh, the first kick or fist is not a score, but you can score after that any time. So that was a score there. So hopefully you understand that, coaches. Uh, great game too. Brilliant for fitness. Brilliant for uh, first touch. Is, uh, handling. Brilliant for ever, ever and decision making. Uh, great for ever and coaches. Um, we'll just move on. Right, early ball, early ball and support. Um, okay, I'll just play it here. Just watch it a wee second. Again, this was done. This was done to the under sixteen group down in Abbottstown. It's just okay. Just watch it. I sure, I'm sure you are seeing what's happening. I'm stopped it here. We second. You see, it's two v two at the start. They start off at the centre cone. The forwards run out round another cone. The defenders run in. We see. Uh, I think Yins have picked it up anyway, coaches. But I'll try my best. Uh, uh, just at the start here, the defenders run in round this yellow cone. The two forwards run out. The, this defender runs in round this cone. So it's two v two here. Likewise for the forwards. And when they go around, the, whenever the forwards go around, one of the forwards of the ball, whenever they go around the cone, the game's live. It becomes 5v5 because there's three players inside. Now, you may play it 4v4, only two inside because sometimes you don't get three players inside nowadays. So you could only play it 2v, just 2v2 two, two, two two in there and 2v2 two two out there. So it'll create more space. Somebody asked the question and uh, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I'll answer it now. How do you create space? Um, in your forward line. Well, the less bodies in that space, the more the more space you'll have to create. And the more bodies is in that space, it's going to be hard to get space. What I'm saying to you is, if you're playing three up, they need to be on the move a lot. If you're playing two up, well, they've got more space to run, run into, whatever the case to be. So you can play either 2v2 here to start. Yes, two men, and they follow the play in. But whenever they go around the cone, they have to get the ball in early to the two or three men inside. So hopefully you'll understand it here. We'll play it one more time here, coaches. Another. And the, it's, it's full game on. That wasn't a great pass there. So here, we're, we're watching ground level here. We better work done. Video work was done at ground level too here. The two players followed in to create a 4v4 or a 5v5, and a great score was taken. The ball, we want the ball on early. You're trying to get that ball on early to the two or three men inside. That was good play there, and I think that was a great score. Okay. Uh, we'll, just can, we'll just maybe play it for another. Hopefully you can pick that up, coaches. Hopefully you have early ball and support. Do you see it? Two yellows, want to get the ball on early. They're looking for movement, they're looking for movement there. Look at the support runner from one of the lads coming from deep. This was a great score. Took a score well. So uh, what else can I say about that one? Um, no, as I say, you can, you can make it 5v5, two outside, three in. You can make 4v4, two outside, two in. You can be, uh, maybe you can make it even one inside. Whatever, you, it's up to you yourself. They, need, they have to move, but 2v2. Two inside, two outside, whatever the case would be. Uh, hopefully you're happy with that, coaches, and we'll just move on. We're doing well here. Okay. Um, listen, here's a wee one animated form. Uh, three, three forwards. It's very simple. All the forwards bubbed in yellow, say. All the bubbed, all the defenders bubbed in, in orange or whatever, whatever colours you have. Two different colours. Three comes with the ball to try to go for the goal. They have the overlap. They're a player over, they are two defenders, and they're going to try to work the goal. 3v2. Again, this is played in a continuous reel, and they're going for the goal with the goalie in. And then after them three finishes, the next three goes, and the next two defenders comes out, and so on. 
So just change over. New players come on the next time. Your forwards out at the 45 yard line or whatever the case may be, or and your maybe further out the field there that's shown the 60 yard line. Uh, might be a wee bit between the 45 and 60, you can play it, and or from the 45, you maybe the 45 is far, far enough, and the three forwards come in and they have to work the goal past the two defenders. Uh, what 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 other way could you change that? You could have two forwards against one defender to see can they work the goal. You can have you can have uh, two forwards against three defenders to see can the see can the two forwards work the goal of even three defenders. You can change the around coaches. I said the last night, two weeks ago, when the last practical session I done at the finish up, a lot of coaches come in and they were telling me how you could change it. Till hey, we'll all learn. We'll all you'll take this away the night. All these activities and you'll you'll change it to suit yourself. You'll 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 change it to get a new game out of it, a new activity out of it. So that's all. That's that's how we all learn. You know, I'll be honest myself. Any evening I'm driving up the road or any morning, if I see a, a, a session going on on a field, uh, if, uh, if, uh, as the boy says, if I can pull in and look over the hedge for five or ten minutes, I'll go home with something new. Absolutely. We all learn from each other and then you can take it home and adjust it to suit your group. So coaches, just simply, 3v2 or 2v2 or 2v1, and as I say, when you have that overlap in the game, it happens in the game. Can you work the goal? Can you work the goal? And it's good, great work for the defenders, uh, you know, not selling themselves too quick and backing off in case that ever happens to your team. If you back off and invite them to take the point instead of always save the goal. Uh, always, what way is it they say? Always concede the goal, uh, concede the point to save the goal. Goals won matches. Concede the point to save the goal. So if you're left in the two to three defenders, it's good work for your defenders to back off and not sell themselves too quick. So it's another wee activity that you can use, coaches. That's all, and you can change the shit. Uh, this is a wee tackle one. I'm doing well here, coaches. I'm, I'm, I'm nearly finished. Near hand tackle. Uh, <laughs> you can do this with any group. Brilliant. How long? How long do you make it? You could, uh, you can make it. You can make that distance between that, between that cone. How long, tie to that cone and that cone? You can make it 40, 50 meters. Absolutely. And what I would ask, what I'd say to you, coaches, and I'm going to put up for you here. Uh, hopefully, I've got a draw it here. A wee cone, for example. I'm not the greatest artist, but it'll do the job. Why am I drawing that up for? I'll tell you why I'm drawing that up for, and I'm, I'm going to draw up another thing here. Oh, sorry. Whatever happened, it's the lane's breaking on me. That's near enough. Right. Why well, I'm drawing that lane for from one green to another green. That before I started, maybe this will show bad one with these lanes up now, but hopefully it'll be all right. Uh, with, the, with this up. The, the player on the ball has to run a straight line, has to run a straight line to allow the the player coming. The player behind starts about one step or a meter or so behind angle ways from the from the player on the ball. We'll just play it and we'll you'll pick it up better than me explaining maybe. Hold on now. Just watch it there. And then So, what I'm trying to explain there, coaches, is, and I didn't explain about my wee cones there. What I'm trying to explain is the player in the ball has to run a straight line. He can't run out wide and try to fill the, the, the person coming on the tackle, the player coming on the tackle. He has to run a straight line to give the tackler a chance to get that near hand in. The player runs up alongside, puts a hand on and flicks the ball away, times, times the tackle. That's the key here. Times tackle. That player on the ball has a toe tap or a bounce to do every four steps. And they're just come up alongside, being paced. They have to make up that yard. It's about a yard, one step or so. They have to make up that meter 
or whatever, you have to get up alongside. No point tackling from behind because if you put the hand over the shoulder from behind, it's a free all day long. They have to get up, be patient, get up alongside. They have, as I said to you, you can make this about 50 meters long. They can get there. Uh, so, and, and get up alongside and just knock the ball out. And what my advice is, have plenty of balls here and have plenty of balls here. Because when the balls are knocked away there, you don't have to go run after that ball. Then the next pair goes and so on. And after every pair goes, you can, after you carry the ball, you become a tackler. Uh, and after you become a tackler, you can change over, you become a ball carrier. So everybody has to be fit to perform the near hand tackle. And before I move on, see these wee cones coaches. These are roughly about 10 steps out from, out from the end. What am I trying to say there? What I'm trying to say there is they have to get by that cone before they pass it off to the next player at the cone. And the next player doesn't go till you blow the whistle. So you, you wait a wee second till the two players are finished, they're out of the road, and start the next two players the ball carrier and the tackler on the whistle, always on the whistle. And remember, see these wee cones are 10 metres out from the end and the ball carrier has to get by them before they pass the ball. You know, I've seen cute players, they're, gonna, they're halfway down the line, they're passing the ball. Don't, they have to carry the ball to get, to, to get, to avoid being tackled. So what I'm saying is, they have to run straight and they have to be by this cone, which is 10 metres out, and when, when I see a cone, you know them be flexible markers that tramp onto the ground. They're not them old hard, hard plastic ones that if you step on, there's no flexibility and you can break an ankle. So we plastic ones. And as I say, they have to buy that before they pass the ball to the next one. And then the next pair goes on your whistle. But give a wee bit of time between each pair going. Great wee drill. Great wee drill. And uh, I'll just show it again. And there, remember the... Encourage a player to get up alongside to knock the ball away. Brilliant wee drill for on the age players, even for senior players, for all players, to practice that near hand tackle. Simply. And it's given, you know, the player on the ball can't be smart, he can't do a dummy toe tap, he can't run wide. He's given the tackler every chance to get... But if the tackler can't make up the ground or can't get their hand in, you know, that's, that's just, that doesn't work out for him. No, the, the ball carrier is not going to make it too simple for him either. He's going to run as hard as possible, and the tackler's going to run as hard as possible. He has bit one meter or less to make up, with a meter, I'm saying. And he should be able to make that meter up over 35 or 40 meters because the man on the ball is carrying it, and he's coming without the ball to get the hand in. So it's good for fitness. It's good for tack, that near hand tackle, and it's a great wee, great wee drill or... I call activity. Okay, right, we'll just move on here and I'm get, getting rid of this here. Hopefully you're understanding the coaches. Uh, we see, um, I think that's it. We'll move on to the next one here. Uh, hold on now. Right, this one's called Pick Your Goal. Uh, you have you can use um, you know the, the poles, the training poles, uh, a set there. Likewise, and likewise, how big do you make the? No less than seven steps, uh, seven or eight steps wide. Don't make them too narrow, or this game will be. It'll not be. You'll not get what you want out of this game. Make the gates wide because what will happen is the defenders will go and stand in the gate and they'll not come out and play man to man or gear to gear, whatever the case may be. So make the gates wide so they can't really defend the gate without t uh, tackling their players. The gate's about seven or eight steps wide. So just simply, one team attacks you one way, the other team attacks the other way. After you score, you have to carry the ball through the gate. You don't kick the ball through the gate. You just carry it through the gate. And after you carry the ball, you don't give the ball back. You turn and you attack. These two gates, either, either of them. If the other team turns it over, then they go this way. And if they score this way, then they go this way. And likewise, and keep the scores. Keep the scores. Uh, don't forget to keep the scores because players love competition. Just watch it. There's the orange team. 
He's cut the, he carried the ball through Gip. Now they're attacking this way. As I say, you can you can play full rules there if you want to. You, you decide what condition you want to put on the game. You can play full rules or whatever whatever you want. Now, uh, is everybody happy with that? I'm gonna I'm gonna show you another wee game here another, from that, which is I'm gonna just show you another way you can play this and i like this game you can put a line of markers for example i'm saying if you have en enough players put a line of markers across the 21. you can put a line of markers across the far other again it's according to many players you have uh across the other 21. i'm doing not too bad my line's not so bad so a line of markers you know, unless, you know, if the pitch is lined out, but I'm deadly, man, I like markers down. You know, sometimes the lines and the pitch is not great and the players don't know where they're going to. So, uh, why important to have your session, you know, done out properly and as I say, there's no doubts. So, instead of going through the gates for this one, all you have to do is get over the line. Uh, hold on now. So, you just get over the line, forget about the gate. So, say if the oranges are playing that way, you just yeah, work the ball as a team. And when you get the ball over the line, not by kicking it, just by carrying the ball over the line, as soon as you get the ball anywhere, anywhere, across that, the whole breadth of the field, anywhere you get that ball across that line, you turn and you attack this way. And you get it there again, you turn and you attack this line. Brilliant intensity. Brilliant for support, brilliant for tackling, uh, everything you have, brilliant for decision making, everything you have. You're going to hold on to the ball, you're going to be patient, you're going to recycle, you're going to wait your chance to get somebody to break the line. So it's all about, as I say, you have to work the ball, you can't kick it, you have to work the ball over the line, likewise through the gates and turn and attack this one. Can I say one wee thing I put into this game, coaches? This, just this particular game here to the lines. Um, I don't allow kicking forward. I don't allow the forward kick pass. All hand pass. And the only time I allow a kick pass if it's a cross field ball. Change the direction of play. Cross field. Cross field. I allow that. Let play continue. Now, I'm only giving you my opinion. You can play it whatever way you want. You can play. But I don't allow the, the ball going forward through the foot. I allow the ball going forward through the hand. But I don't allow the ball. I just I don't I just put that on it and I just feel it's it's more beneficial in this game. The, it's good for them to think of a change of play. That if if a yellow has a ball here, instead of everybody being here bunching looking for the ball, it's somebody smart enough to come to this side of the field and, and look shout for the cross field ball, change the direction. But as I said to you, you can allow the ball to be kicked forward too. I'm only giving you my opinion. Great game. When you get the ball all in, you can play up to five, you can play for a certain time. Uh, again, you can play it for, at all levels. Uh, 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 so, uh, hold on now. And uh, I'll get rid of these lines. So, hope you're happy, ha enough, happy enough for that game. And I'll uh, just play it one more time with the gates. This is with the gates now. So, remember, remember you can do it with the lines too. Okay, everybody happy with that? Only a couple left, coaches. We're doing well. Um, uh, wide player. I'm sure you have seen a lot of these games before. Wide player. What, what, what can this wee game improve? Like that last game that we played, pick your goal. Do you know the gates? Uh, it encourages players, the team to play what, use the, the full what of the field. This game, likewise, maybe even more, more, maybe even more so in this game too. What? Because you're looking what at any stage, uh, from your own goals till the opposition's goals. So, what happens here is I'm going to play it a wee second first, and then I'm sure a lot of you knows the game anyway. The red team, they played the ball to the player in the wide, wide, and he gave it back to the red team. They scored. The other team, blue team, legal wide with the. And they score. 
So I'll explain it now in a wee second. What happens here is, what happens here is, coaches, um, you have a player playing along the sideline. Um, what, I, what you could do is, if you have a tight sideline and you don't have much space behind the sideline to the fence, or, or if you have plenty of space, then you can play right to the sideline. If you don't have, you can have maybe a wee area, two metres, marked out right up the field for that wide player. Or, as I say, if you have space between the sideline and the fence, then he, he or she stays right along the outside of the sideline. And likewise here. Or, as I say, you can play it. If you have no space, you can play it off the line, but you need to draw a wee line of markers like like done there. And that's the only player can go into that area, this this uh, wide player. And he or she can can play for both teams. So, for example, if the red team of the ball, before the condition you put in the game, you play a full game, but the condition you put in the game is you have to go through the wide player before you can score. So you, you're automatically you're making your team use the what's the field. And if you play it to this wide player, whichever team plays it to this wide player, he or she has to play the ball back to the team who played it to them. Likewise on this side. Now, I'm going to make up, you can, if the red team's coming down the field here, you could have them play it to this player, play back. You might have to use the both wide players before you can score. So you have to go wide here, then you have to go wide here and get it back before you can score. Or you can have this boy or girl playing for the red team and you can have this player playing for the blue team. Or you can have, as I said to you, you can have them as two neutrals and you have to go through just one before a score, or you have to go through the two before a score. And remember, whoever passes the ball to them, that player, uh, when they are playing for neutral teams, when they're playing for neutral teams, they give the ball back to the team who passed the ball to them. And that pass has to be a hand pass. Okay, get that, coaches. That's my opinion. You can decide they can kick it or, or hand pass it. But I'd rather prefer playing it that, that these players only can hand pass the ball back. They can't kick it 60 yards. They, they have to hand pass it back. So whenever the ball's given there, somebody has to be going by the shoulder for the return. And uh, what else can I say? Um, and these players, neutral players, as I say, if the red team's attacking this way and this player is playing for the red team and the ball's up here, this player's no point standing here. He'd be better supporting the play up right up the line he's run he or she's run up the line to try to help the team uh yes you say yes they could kick the ball some but i'd rather see the player up and down the line supporting the ball all the time if the ball's here then that player's down there for that team and this player's down here they're always close to the ball to support the ball they're not away at the far end of the field so these players are traveling up and down the outside of the line but remember coaches they cannot be tackled they can not be tackled. Okay, great game to improve what. And again, you have everything in that game too. You're playing, you're playing, you're playing the game. Love the games. Um, okay, um, right. I think I got that. Now, two more to finish, coaches. Oh, switch the play. Right. Uh, I. I I got a, a fellow the other day to do this and for me because I had it in the wrong format of animated form and, and uh, um, he done a great job uh, for me, uh, Ronan. And um, uh, he, he knows I'm from Derry, so he says, Tony, this is Derry v Dublin. <laughs> and he said, what do you see where the ball ends up at? I'll, let, I, I'll, show, I'll play it for coaches before I speak about it. Throw run, and of course Derry wants it. Finish an onion bag, coaches. From the throw on. Oh, that dairy team's too good for Dublin, the locks of things. Now, uh, this game, coaches, you're going to ask me what's all these lanes. Uh, there's five lanes up and down the field. You, but I'm going to say, if you like this game, if you like this game, you like, <coughs> if you like what you hear and see here, then 
you mark your lanes out with we flexible and we trump on like, you, like the trump on the ground with we markers and make them clear don't be putting down one one end of the field and one the other end of the field and the players will not have a clue where the lanes are at well, put plenty of markers down the field that they all see each lane right i'm going to explain it here why did why am i doing this game this game is good if, if your team has been regularly turned over for overhead if you know know that overhead hand pa pass you make you're trying to put it over the opposition's uh head and he's a he or she's hands up and intercept it if you feel you're getting a lot of the opposition get a lot of turnovers because you're doing that straight hand pass over somebody's head or you know you're you're a lot of your a lot of your running is straight lines and straight passes and you're running into trouble and you're been turned over uh this game can be played even without without lines uh you could play a wee game but every pass has to be an angled pass remember the wee angled activity we done earlier on there every pass has to be an angled pass um and you could play a game but any straight passes or any passes over the head of an opposition uh give a free against just allow it just with all angled passes to get players to run, run off shoulders of different angles um uh what else uh if you have if you go for the if you go for the lanes here and you could go for we have five lanes here so every pitch every pitch is roughly i'm just saying about 90 steps so if you're five lanes that's about 18 steps what what each each uh each uh lane 18 steps uh you could go for a sixth lane coaches another lane for for example well it'll be it'll be it'll have to be marked out bounds but you could have a sixth lane for example my lane my it's not great this time you could have a sixth lane but again make sure they're evenly marked out and that'll be up roughly about uh 15 steps apart if you have six lanes and when you're playing this game then every pass you can't make the same pass if you're passing the ball you have to pass the ball to one of your teammates who's in a different lane you might allow that angle pass in the same lane but you're not going to allow the straight pass over somebody's head or just a straight pass to a teammate that's looking just in front of you but or behind you you're not allowing that pass and so you encourage them they have to be in a different lane to receive the ball you can use hand passing you can use kick passing for game but you can't pass to a teammate in the same lane unless if you want to keep the angle pass on that's ground but i'll tell you this it i've done this with a group and it takes them even for seniors and minors it takes them a, a game or a time or two to get onto it see but we see when they get onto it they get very very good done they're really tuned in they're 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 coming from different angles or they're moving into different uh lanes and you find the opposition find it harder to turn the ball over and less interceptions that's my feeling so uh one last thing before i and as i say it's great for switching play uh switching play from from left to right or whatever the case may be we say just before i move on here coaches just moving the play from this lane to this lane maybe with a kick pass or a wee hand pass from this lane to this lane but it's always it's always an angled pass it's not straight passes and one last thing can i say that you could encourage that the person who's taking the shot at the finish up uh how long now ty the person who's taking a shot at the finish up if you know what i mean has to be between the has to be between the ball that last pass has to be between has to be between the ball nets if you know what i mean has to be between the ball nets uh that before he shoots you have to work that ball between between the ball nets so you're what i'm trying to say to you you've got the ball into the scoring zone don't be going for wild shots so I'm just gonna, if you give me a wee second, coaches, I'm gonna clear the board here and just play at one last time to see Derry scoring a goal against Dublin. Uh, 
which will make us all happy. Well, maybe not us all, but me. Okay, so we'll watch her again here. That's her there. See the way the pass is in different lanes? No straight passes. That was a lovely kick. Hand pass and goal. We'll show it one more time, coaches. Watch it. Passes into different lanes. Remember, coaches, think about the six lanes. I have only five lanes there tonight. Could be better with six lanes. And remember I said 15 steps apart for six lanes, roughly, if your field is 90 steps wide and, and 18 steps to five lanes. You can start with six and you can go down to five. It can be done with five too, okay? Um, brilliant. Hopefully you got some out of that there. Hopefully it makes sense. And uh, last one. Double back, I call this. We'll play it before I talk about it. Okay, I'll stop it. Right. Uh, you've noticed already. You noticed a yellow player, a, a, a player wearing a yellow jersey in this and say the 21. You see a player well, you don't have to, but but for this one that I'm showing, I'm just showing it uh, till, for it to be more clear. Uh, you don't have to have different chairs. You, you, you can have two teams playing, of course. But what you're doing here is there's one player that plays inside the 21 all the time. And the ball has to go through. No, sorry, the ball has to go through that player. But every time that player gets the ball, he's going to be playing deep. And if you can kick the ball in deep to him, or for Horland or Komogi, you strike the ball in there. That player cannot turn and score. Support has to come from other players for that player to offload the ball. So that one player on each team. So my advice is, if you're playing a game and thin, and maybe it's best only to do it with one player because the other team might catch on very quickly. So if you pull one team aside and say, right, see you, Johnny, you're playing inside the night. You know, other another player can play inside with you, of course, or you can play whatever the case would be. But whenever you get the ball, you're going to tell the rest. You're going to tell all Johnny's teammates. You're trying to get the ball into Johnny as quick as you can here. But when Johnny gets the ball, he can't score. So there has to be support coming from deep. See, see, play like that there. If you look at real good club teams and county teams, they have support coming at the 100 mile an hour from deep. And that's what creates goal chances and point chances, coaches. So just nominate a player, maybe a player in both teams. But then after a few minutes of that position, get you on, change that player, you know, take a wee break. Uh, have a wee word, take both teams to either side of the field. Uh, if you have two coaches, have a wee one is good, a wee word with one team, the other has a wee word with the other team, and change that player then. That they don't, they'll not catch on. So, what I'm saying is, it's brilliant to encourage support from deep. When when the players out the field know that we, Johnny or Mary or whoever it is, gets that ball inside, they can't score. So, they're dependent on support coming from deep. Uh, so, Support has to come from deep for them because they say they can't score. So it really encourages the players out to feel good. We have to go and support him or her. So whenever they see the ball, say if this boy or girl's kicking the ball in, then this player will know, God, Johnny can't score, so I'm going to be coming off the shoulder at the right time. You know them we activities we done earlier on there? And just a uh, goal point right away. If you come off the shoulder the right time. Um, yes, you're going to say, Tony, thing, th things have changed now. Because uh, Johnny or Mary, if this is a target person inside here, if they take a mark that's 20 metres from kick from outside the 45, and they take the mark without the ball hitting the ground, then they have a decision to make. Yes, they have a decision to make. But still, you can make that decision easier for them. If there's somebody going by their shoulder at 100 metres an hour, and no covering behind. You're, you're not going to stop to hopefully take your point. You're going to slip the ball to them, and it's a goal. 
So yes, make the uh, yes they maybe decide if the support's not there, then they can take the mark. But they, remember what I said: they can't score from play. They can't score from play. These players have to. They need support from deep. Uh, so I'll just play it one more time here. Again, if you have any questions, maybe we'll take questions in five minutes here. Um, just watch it again. Players come up the field, and you're looking to you're encouraging the early ball in at the stage. You're encouraging the ball to come on early through the foot from outside the 45 or whatever. If, if, if there's no sweepers getting the ball in there, and remember when that ball goes into that player that you've nominated. Remember, they don't have to be in a different jersey because you're giving the secret away to opposition, playing the same jerseys. But just tell your team, one team, this Johnny or Mary is going to be, whenever they get the ball, they can't turn and score tonight. They're dependent on you to support them. So it's brilliant. You know, nearly, sometimes you can do it with two players on side. Absolutely, change the suit yourself. And it really encourages players to come from deep, whatever the case may be. Um, I think that's I think that's that's us now. Hold on now to I see. I'm very sure here. I think that's us. So coaches, hopefully you understand that. Again, put your line of markers across the 21 clearly. And Johnny or Mary can't come out, can't come outside that. They are playing inside that uh, for the game. Okay, uh, we'll just see. I think it is. I right, well, I'll tell you what I'll do, coaches, before I take the que before I take the questions. Um, I'm going to play this wee video, uh, I, and then I'm going to take the questions to the very, very finish up here. If this wee video, if this, if the sound doesn't play in this, Paul, will let me know fairly quickly, or Shane, and I will. Um, uh, as I say, I can't see. I'm only seeing the screen here. So if it's not playing properly here, uh, if there's no sound, then I'll not play it. It's only three minutes long. I played it last night. If it doesn't play, you'll get it up on YouTube anyway on the last one I delivered, webinar three. It'll have been webinar three. I think it's brilliant. It change can be good. So we'll see if it plays. If there's music with it, if there's no music with it, we'll stop it quick. Three minutes, and then we'll take the questions. Thank you, coaches. Just there's wee handy phrases here, useful phrases that might be very useful for you when you're managing a coach and a team. Okay, it's it's the same in all walks of life. So uh, this could do a lot of things. Okay.
All right, coaches. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Change is good, and change is good, coaches. Yes, you know, I'm sure we all we all know though that, and we you know times you have to change and you have to move on. And I thought uh, you know there's a lot of that there. Uh, there's a lot of we phrases there. I think is useful to you in your coaching and your management of teams too, as well as your workplace or whatever. Uh, so. Uh, right, coaches. Just to finish off, just I'm sure Paul's a couple of questions, uh, a few questions. I know it's uh, quarter to nine, and I was hoping to get right up for that. So sorry, coaches, but I'm going to go through a couple here. Um, a few to come in uh, whenever you are regin for the, the session tonight. And the first, one, a number of you come in, as I said to you, is about how do you social distance and what drills you can use. I've already talked about that, coaches. So I've told you where you can get a few more plus them couple of night. The next question here uh, is from uh, Mickey here in New York, believe it or not. Uh, when should you start introducing two footballs? Uh, Mickey, I would say to that, Mickey, um, uh, that was Mick Bowen from Dublin, the Dublin coach, he, the coach of Dublin Ladies team. I, I've seen a course he done, a webinar or a workshop in two footballs. It's brilliant. I know uh, whenever they're ready for it, uh, whenever they're ready for it, Mickey, um, why not 9, 10, 11, 12, whenever they, whenever they can toe tap, I'm saying to you, whenever they have the half rate on their, on their stronger foot, get them onto their weaker foot. Two, two balls, I'm sure most of you as coaches know what I'm on about here. Ball on your right hand and ball on your left hand, I know that's, that's what Mickey's talking about, hopefully. Uh, toe tap right hand, catch one hand, toe tap left hand. Likewise, working off a wall, kick right foot, and catch it with your right hand, kick left foot. So two footballs makes you work on both sides. Brilliant work, um, great. So what I'm saying is, whenever the the skill mastered and they're so um, half mastered on a so stronger side, get them onto the weaker foot uh, as quick as possible, and then you'll have, uh, you know, they'll be a better player as they go through. But as I say, don't don't put them onto it too quick. What I'm saying here, because if they're not able to toe tap with the right foot or not able to kick with the ball the right foot or the strong foot, sorry, not the right foot, the strong foot. So whenever they have the, their stronger foot near enough mastered, then get them onto the weak side. And likewise, hand passing and all that. And, and even the ball there, you guys seen seen action, throwing a ball up with one hand, catching it on the soft hand, taking down up the chest and throwing the other ball up with the left hand. Great, great for... For, for, for players, great for young ones. Yeah, right, uh, suggestions for youth players to have better movement in the full forward line from Sean here. Uh, Sean, I would say, um, uh, well, the less bodies I talked about earlier, if the less bodies you play inside, the more space for players to run until. Um, whether you're playing two or three, I know what we think what, uh, you could do is make three, if you're playing three, make three big boxes. Are marked out three big squares or rectangles or squares marked out with them we soft markers and when the ball you know the game I played showed a couple of weeks ago on three part pitch when you're coming up through that middle half you're, you're it's a three second rule to get the ball in so when they're coming through that middle half then them players it's in them three boxes they have to ex ex exchange boxes the three players move to different boxes or if you're playing two up they have to move so um, you're creating you're creating movement there they have to be into another box whenever they see the ball coming through that middle forward of the field they're moving. Or another one, another one, Sean, you could do is um, uh, just condition the game a halfway kick. What I mean by that, Sean, when the ball comes to the halfway line, you can't carry it over it, you can't hand pass it over it, you have to kick it in. So at least the players inside know the ball's coming, so they won't move. I think a lot of the time now, there's a lot of hand passing, and I have no no problem with that because it's that has to be done times. And the players then say they don't want to move because they don't get the ball. It's not kicked in, and so they find themselves. I think players move maybe better years ago when the, there was more kicking the game. But as I say, if you're playing a wee game and thinning that the ball's going to be kicked when the, the the ball can't be carried over the halfway line, it can't be hand passed. It has to be moved. Then players will know what's coming. Or a three second rule, as I said earlier. And that middle, when you come at that middle third, three second rule, and the ball has to get in. So you'll get players to move then. Uh, hopefully that answers this question, Sean. Uh, would there be any other ways to improve decision making other than playing games from James? Ah, uh, James, that's a good one. Because uh, uh, everybody says, 
Uh, the only way you learn is through through games. You don't learn by setting out wee markers on the field and telling wee Johnny or me to run to a blue to a green marker the whole night to a white marker. Uh, you learn better through games. And you're asking any other ways. Well, do you know this? I, 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 I think I've been sent another question from Terence here. How do you develop question skills? How do you develop question skills for decision making? Um, I think. Uh, I think the answer there, maybe, and I want to give you my opinion, is that when you are playing games, you know, let them know the reason you're playing a game, James. Why, what, why, why are we playing this game tonight? Get the feedback. No, don't let. Sorry, I said it wrong there. Don't let them know. You ask the players. Why do you think we're playing this game tonight, players? Get the feedback from them, and then they'll see a reason to play this game. And it's another way, possibly, of of, me, of them improving their decision making. So, you no, know, ask them for feedback. You don't don't be the teller all the time. Don't be the teller. I'm only giving you my opinion. Don't be the teller. Get them to tell you, and then that will be players will become better decision makers. Teams as a unit will become better decision makers. Uh, hopefully, that answers the question. James, um, uh, not on here. Uh, how do you accommodate? How do you accommodate to, uh, stronger and uh, and weaker players? Um, I don't the twelve level. Well, um, you know, how do you keep them all happy? Because if you're focusing on the weaker players, I think that's what the question means. If you're focusing on the weaker players, the stronger players get fed up, and um, and 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 he focus on the stronger players, then the weaker players will will not get in, will not get no benefit from the session. Uh, how do you accommodate both? Uh, well, again, I would say um, through 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 your games and all, make sure you put maybe put a wee condition on the stronger players that they only allowed um, one solo or no solos or right one or two or whatever, and have to move the ball. Uh, so you're bringing in the weaker players into the game. Don't let them. Don't let them run. The, and 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 you no, know, by talking to them and saying, you know, we're looking here to big your picture, boys or girls. We're looking. We're looking at senior level here because at senior level you'll not be fit to go the whole way with the ball. At on the age level, that that is a that is a common thing at on the age level. But um, as I say, putting a weak condition on them stronger players and. Uh, would bring in the weaker players into the game. Also, as I said earlier, see if you have a number of coaches at your training session. You know, you could get a number of coaches do a wee bit of individual work or a wee bit of spot and fixing with them weaker ones or uh, without without overdoing it, without interrupting your session too much. But uh, just, as I say, we condition the game and maybe they have to go through a player before they can score. Uh, you know, maybe one of your so-called weaker players, they have to go through that player before they can score, like the wide player there I talked about. But this player could be on the actual field and that player has to be involved in the move before they can score. Just we simple ideas for that. Very good. Um, would What would you advise by... When t what would your what would your advice be when taking a team that is not used to success and trying to change their mindset? Um, uh, again, again, it's all about setting. No, not every team. You know, unfortunately, not every club is gonna is gonna win. And you know, it's all about setting realistic targets and and you know for the year and looking at the bigger looking at the bigger picture and saying. You know, and also in your training session, coaching session, really believing in your players and driving them on, and just getting every ounce of them. And come the game, if you're if you're really in it with them, they'll give you all they can, and they'll do their very very best one. And as I say, unfortunately, not every club. But you know this: your day in the sun will come. Everybody, every club, or it'll come at some stage, and hopefully, you'll still be about, and you'll be fit to say. Look, I played my part, and as I say, it's only for only for the coaches and the volunteers that we have on the ground. Um, I know that that's that that's what makes a J, and we all know that. So what I'm saying is, I know it's tough, as I say, when you've, you go to the numbers and 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 players. Are, I I don't see like them at all. But I'm, I'm, what I'm saying to you is, really do I really do mean this? You'll get whatever you can out of that group by being 
just believing in them and, and, and making them feel special and every player feels special and they'll do all their best for you and that's all you can do and as I say, think about the bigger picture times too and them lads will, girls will come through at some stage and, and, and deliver and, and, and get their prize. And here the last one, uh, any tips? Well, you're a number of stronger players uh, who don't trust the a number of stronger players, maybe when they're playing the game, they don't trust their weaker players to bring them into the game and they, they tend to hold on to the ball that extra second longer rather than letting let them go to the weaker players. Aye, that's, that happens and especially on the age level again, some similar to that that last question there, the, the stronger players. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes as coaches, <laughs> we're, we, and we're all, and we all wear the same T-shirt here, you know, uh, at on the age level anyway, you know, we'll, we we will maybe sometimes be happy enough if that player takes an extra two or three two taps as long as we won the game. And um, but again, you're talking about the bigger picture here, and you're telling that player, God, you know, you have to be a team player. Gaelic football, hurling, camogie, ladies, ladies football, it's a team game. And when it comes through the senior level, um, it, it, it teams always wants eye, eyes, eye, the eye, more, the we more so in the eye. So it's all about. Just delivering the right message to them. So, uh, any more, Paul? There. Uh, just two or three questions here, Tony. Just before we wrap up, there. Yes. Uh, Go Games is all about promoting young players and uh, players playing in different positions. There's a question in here about what age should a coach or make a player stick to a certain or specific position? Maybe. Uh, uh, are there an age? Are there an age, coaches? I'm not so sure. I'm, I'm not so sure uh, they're an age, you know. I look back to my own career and, uh, you know, I finished up full forward playing for my club. And I play, I know, on, uh, you know, uh, you know, I play, played a lot of, played a lot of, and a lot of players, I look at my own club here, and a lot of players move from defence into forward lines, different coaches come in and managers and they see the thing differently. Do you, yes, you'll always get maybe one or a few players that, Originally, originally a full back or a midfielder, a full forward, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put, I would always keep the door open. That'd be, that'd be the answer to that question. I'd always keep the door open and never say that that player is going to be a goalkeeper for the rest of his or her career. He could end, could, could end out to be a good player. So, uh, sorry, uh, an outfield player, not a good player, because your goalkeeper at the moment is near enough to your best player in the field. So, uh, that's how I'd answer that, Paul. No problem. Thanks, Tony. Uh, I suppose this is dependent on maybe the individual or how skillful that person is. Well, what distance should a player start kicking instead of hand passing? I'm sure again. What? What? Sorry, What Paul? distance should a player start kicking? So, you know, uh, what distance should a player maybe foot pass the ball well, instead of hand passing? You know, do you know this? That's a good question. That's a brilliant question because, do you know this? I, 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 that annoys me times. Um, that really annoys me. And I don't know did that coach hear me talking about this. That's maybe that way. I don't know. Um, um, I, I see, and as I say, we all wore the T-shirt, but I see um, we kicking drills or kicking activities over 15 metres, maybe from the end lane to the 21 or the end lane to the 14. Um, that would do. That would make me cross, coaches, honestly. Uh, yes, maybe in a warm-up or whatever the case would be, but I see this happening. And as I say, we all we all done it. Um, you know, you can hand pass a ball. Well, see, when you're go going at pace, all it takes is a wee flick of the hand, the ball will travel 14, 14 metres, no bother. With a wee flick of the, a wee flick of the, without any effort, a wee flick of the fingers, the open hand. So when you're going to pace a ball at travel, what distance, you know, uh, you know, I still think you can even make a 20-yard a hand pass, no bother. So what I'm saying is, you'll know your player, the players will know, I'm sure they'll all boil down to age level, senior players can strike a ball maybe a wee bit longer and on the age players but don't don't be encouraging very short kicks uh, get them to hand pass the ball over that distance and and make sure that whenever they're kicking the ball it is a kick pass not a uh, they're not they're not kicking the ball when it should be a hand pass okay okay Tony just to finish up the last question there any tips or guidelines to coach free taking to under age, at underage levels uh, any tips or guidelines to tell coach free taking coach free taking at underage levels um, uh, again, at any level, 
free kicks, it's about, it's about practice. It's about practice, practice, practice. Also, what I would say is, no matter what level, on the age level, county level, club level, it's all about practice. And uh, I know players that I played with were out with their, the bags of the ball and, uh, twice a week or maybe in the weekend, practicing their free, steady. Um, what, I would, what I would say is, um, you can play wee games and thinning coaches. Uh, you know, sorry, we condition in your game at thinning. And I don't know that I show it maybe in the first night. I'm not too sure. Uh, I'll explain it now to you very simply before we move on and uh, end this. Just playing a real game and thinning, but setting down seven or eight different markers at different lengths out from the goals, different angles. Now, within scoring distance now, within scoring distance. Uh, distance. And likewise, the far end of the field, different angles, different distances, but within scoring distance. And see when a team scores, it's double or quits. The free kicker of that team, they can nominate a free kicker of that team, has to step forward and hit a free. If they put the ball over, they, and they, out of them seven, eight cones, they'll go to the easier one first. That's ground. If they kick it over the bar, you lift that cone. And they get two points for it, it's double or quits. If they miss it, they get no points for the score they originally got. Uh, for a goal, it's a penalty, double or quits, six or nothing. So you're putting pressure. You know, it's all right going to the field during the day by yourself. That's great, but it's not game match pressure. If you're doing that, that wee game and thinning, putting down a wee marker, they have to put the ball over the bar to get their team their second point, if it was his point originally. And then you lift that cone. If they miss it, you leave that cone there. But if they score, they lift the cone. And then after the next score they get from play, they have to go to a wee bit more difficult one. And likewise, the far end of the field for the other team. So it's it's more match practice. Their peers will all be there. They'll be hands up. They'll be shouting at them. They'll be putting them under pressure. So it'll be more, it'll be more as I say, match pressure. Uh, more so. But again, the practice has to be done by themselves too. That's brilliant, Tony. You've answered all that very well. So thanks very much. I'm just going to wrap things up here now. That's great. Uh, can I remind everyone that this presentation and all the webinars can be found on the Ultra GA YouTube channel. On behalf of Ultra GA, I would just like to thank everyone for joining us. A special mention to our host and presenter, Tony Scullion, who put a lot of time and effort into the webinars. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that they were excellent and very enjoyable. So that's the end of this series of webinars. And I wish you all the best as you all take the fields again. And hopefully you'll be using some of the games and activities you picked up over the last few weeks with teams you're coaching. So good night and all the best in the future. Thank you.